You've bought Transport Fever 2 but you're stuck on signals and junctions, or maybe you just wanted to learn some more about them. Most importantly, in this video we're also taking a quick peek at train hierarchy to make sure you know how to use signals appropriately depending on the train type being used. Signals are really important to get right in this game so it's really important that you watch the end of this video if you want efficient trains in your game. Unlike a car, trains take more distance to stop than the distance that can be seen from it, so trains must rely on signals. In the late 1800s, trains ever increasing speed led to the widespread use of signals using what are known as block sections. Here's an example of a block section in Transport Fever 2. A block section is the distance between signals. You can see on this end of the track, we've put signals frequently, and on this end, no signals. So we've made lots of little block sections and one huge block section. You can see trains are going to get backed up here. There's a train waiting there, there's a train waiting there, just because this train is in this section. So to counteract this, we can add some more block sections on this end of the track. As the game is waiting until this whole section is clear from all trains before letting a train through just because there's no signals. So to fix this, let's add some signals in. And now that's running so much more smoothly, there's no traffic jams. When you're making your signals, make sure the distance of a block section is longer than your longest train running on the tracks. And by the way, there's a mod for this called AutoSig, but only use this on long straight tracks they don't have any junctions coming off them, because if a signal is placed wrong at a junction, it could block up the junction, but we'll get to this later. Uh, in Transport Viva 2, as the train drivers are run by a computer, it doesn't make mistakes, so there's only red and green or stop and go signals. When a train passes a signal, it will change to red until the next signal on the track has been passed by the train. At this point, a train waiting at the signal can then proceed to the next signal until the same thing happens over there. There's a term for this called defending or protecting, which, as suggests, means that it's preventing a crash. By the way, by placing a signal on a route, it should automatically set up the bi-directional traffic just like a road. And if it doesn't, select your route in the route tool and then add a signal as a waypoint during the route and this will fix it. Just a side note, there's two types of signals in this game, but it's just visual, they're exactly the same. Now let's show you an example of signals on a junction. There's two-way traffic for each of these splits here. So pause the video and guess how many signals that you think are needed to defend. We need three signals, one here to defend the trains from crashing this way, one here for this way, and one here for this way. Think about this when you're making your junctions. Now in all of this, one really important thing you need to remember is when you're making your junctions, you don't want to foul them. And what's fouling? Let me explain. So when setting up your junctions, you want to think about how long the train's going to be on the route. For example, you might think that it's going to be a good idea to place a signal down over on this junction here. And this would defend these paths and allow another train to queue and wait for a slot in the station, even though this station's perhaps a little bit overkill on the amount of slots it has. It's got quite a few, <laughs> uh, but regardless, pretend it's a small station. But let's pretend here that this train's waiting for a slot in the station. They're actually just assets, but in doing so, it's actually blocked this main signal, which controls a significant amount of track into the station. In fact, this signal is doing the job defending all these tracks, but this signal here is classed as fouled by this train waiting at this signal, which means this signal can't be used. This means that a train can't wait here, I'll have to wait at the signal behind, and it means that the train's going to get stuck here, and then the train behind is going to get stuck, and it's going to lead to a massive traffic jam all the way down the line. You want as little stopping as physically possible on the main line. Once you've got all your signal blocks in place, you can add lots of trains. In this example, there's lots of people waiting for this commuter train, so it's worth adding more here. This brings me to one huge mistake I see lots of people make in this game, and that's using rail hierarchy incorrectly. Most people make the mistake of making every single route a commuter service. It's a super easy mistake to make, but it's a really important one not to if you want to make the highest efficiency trains. Now depending on where you are in the world, your country will use a different variation of this. What you need to do is establish commuter, intercity and cross country, otherwise known as rural city link bullet or a similar three names. You need to hook your biggest or capital cities directly together with a cross country or bullet train and then have tracks splitting off to join cities along the way. So two tracks and they both need connecting. There's two ways of doing this. One is expensive but efficient and one is very cheap but not as efficient and it can sometimes lead to some traffic jams. I've made the fork. Let's connect these two tracks and I'm going to teach you a trick that's really important to know as it can save you a massive headache later on. When you're connecting these two tracks, a beginner might think that connecting it like this is the best way of doing it. This causes a few issues though, we don't need these issues and you should only really use this if this is a really high density amount of tracks in like a yard or something and also on the main line at the same time. Those two circumstances must be met to use this type of connection from a main line to a side line. Let me show you how you actually do it. So the cheap way to do it would be to connect this track into this track just here but just slide it back as far as it can go in this case because there's another junction over here and we've got to fit something in so we're going to close this down we're going to plug that in there instead 
and give it a nice signal just there but now you think okay we've got a track to go on one side but this isn't omnidirectional traffic this is one way well it's pretty simple all you got to do is go right up to the junction drag this across to the next junction and place it down so you've got a little crossover and then just like any other junction you want to add signals for the junction so one signal goes there to defend this way we get one signal just there to defend this way and one signal just here to defend this way although in this case there's already one there but having things cross over the main line and, and things have to stop at signals is probably not the best idea ever because like I say you never want to have trains stopping on the main line at all costs and that's why if you've got the money and this isn't just a storage place or depot for the trains where there's very few trains going to actually be using this crossover if it's a frequently used track do this instead so as we were but clear some space this track's going to go down and it's going to go underneath this bridge now this can be a bit tricky and like I say it's much more expensive so make sure you've got plenty of space I've cleared all the roads out here and bring this track underneath the bridge on the right side if it's left hand traffic the other way around obviously that goes in there and this guy is going to go in to just about there lovely okay and now let's say we want to run a train onto the main line from this sideline we can clone a train here this second track is hooked up to the depot so these trains are now on the way out the depot while they're on the way we can fill out the signals very simple stuff one signal goes there one signal goes there and one signal goes there not every map needs cross country or bullet routes it depends on the size of the map and where your biggest or capital cities are so you might want to consider this when you're making your map the trains on this type of route take a very long time to get to full speed so it's not worth stopping and starting as it will never reach the top speed the train's capable of and you might as well use intercity or city link trains instead depending on how far away from the main line and the frequency of stops this will determine which category of train route and which trains are needed to be used typically speaking commuter or Royal services will stop at every station and have the same priority as freight trains. Intercity or CityLink will leave the main line slightly along the way to stop at big cities but quickly return. It can pass through commuter stations if they happen to be along the way to its destination. But if it isn't a huge city, it probably shouldn't stop. It can also reuse some of the cross country or bullet tracks in some places. It can also construct an overtaking section, while higher tier trains can overtake slower services. This can also be used for commuter use on intercity routes. For this, create a siding and remove a few signals on the run up to it to create one big block section before the junction. Add a signal to the siding and leave the main track without one. Then in the line manager, select the signal as a waypoint in the commuter train's journey, but leave the faster train's route, and then the slower train will wait until the faster train has passed if there's one on the way. And if not, it will just continue on its business. Cross-country trains need to stay on one direct route the whole way there, only stopping for the two or three are to push biggest or capital cities. You want freight trains to borrow intercity and rural track and never use the fast main line, unless you're an American railway company. How's that going for you American train users? <laughs> I'm only messing guys, I promise. <laughs> Side note, you can also reuse rural tracks for light rail trains if they happen to be in a useful place for them when you're building your light rail network later on. But now you understand how signals and train hierarchy works. How are you going to cope with running all the trains needed at one time without any traffic jams? That's why you need to watch this video which shows you the best passenger station design made for handling all the types of train hierarchy. You're going to need this, check it out.